All right, making a quick video on my marine tank voyage using a smaller tank and a canister filter. So this is a, uh, it's a stand actually for 20 gallons. So I was limited by 30 inches wide by say 14 deep. The largest gallon tank I could get that would fit that old stand was a 37 gallon. So 20 gallon, 29 gallon, 37 gallon, all same footprint. 37 gives you the most gallon, but it is tall. It's 24 inches tall. Um, so it's kind of nice though. It's kind of like a picture, but I know let's say I have the, a great light, it won't be ideal for a reef tank, but I think I've got a, a, a decent light that'll make it work. Uh, I've also built up my rock structure to be about midway. Um, I use Marco rock with some Marco rock mortar, um, put together three different islands and some shelf work to hold some different corals. Besides the footprint being a little limited on this stand, it's also room for a sump. We'll be able to work in the top of a sump was, uh, I didn't have a lot of room. So I'm trying a canister. I watched a few YouTube videos on people using canisters and it seems to be a green light. And I'll let you know as this progresses. But right now I've got an FX4 under here. I did uh, replace, got rid of some of the, I took out the kind of cheap red plastic trays in there, put in some new fluval media, a whole bunch of fluval media, and I upgraded the uh, the hoses. So this is not, although it looks kind of similar, corrugated black hosing. This is the thicker uh, garden hose from Home Depot or Lowe's. They both have it. This is the one inch interior diameter, and the one inch interior diameter fits these barb fittings on the top of the FX's. I did, I was getting a few drips uh, when I first connected it, so I wrapped each barb in Teflon tape like a few times. Like I went around four or five times with Teflon tape. More to bring the thickness of the barb up just a little bit more because the interior diameter of these, of the garden hose, uh, it's smooth, but it is a little bit uh, bigger than the normal stuff that comes with the fluval. But this thing is quiet. I've got this thing on, if you can believe it. Zero sound. I think the furnace in my basement is making more noise than this canister. And that kind of helps out my simple look to my tank. Went with a black tank. So this is, a, I, I painted the back black, uh, but that went with, so this is a Sephora 37 gallon, which has black trim, uh, I would say has a black uh, rim on the top, but also the caulking is black. So it went with the, uh, the black paint on the back. This just happened there. There's not a lot of makers of a 37 gallon anymore. I think two and the Sephora happened to be the higher quality one. There was also a good price at my local fish store. So that worked out. I did, you'll notice there's no, even though I'm using a canister, I did not come over the back with the big U fittings in the pipe. I hard plumbed it. So I drilled two holes in the back put in two bulkheads. Um, one is my, uh, here's my return that I put some lock line on. Went with a smaller half inch lock line. The three quarter inch was pretty thick for a 37 gallon. So uh, went with a T with two fans, smaller fan to shoot the flow around the corner there and then a larger fan to agitate the top. Um, input to the canister that's going out of the tank is this lower bulkhead. 
I was gonna put the bulkhead down towards the sand bed with a filter, obviously a screen on it, but it, it worked out that I chose the higher, you know, the up higher in the tank and then piping it down lower. Uh, it does have the pipe, but I painted it so it's kind of hidden. But it was way easier to drain my tank down to work on my plumbing if I only had to come down 8 inches versus 20 inches. Uh, so I could leave most of my tank volume there, covering my rocks, and work on my plumbing if I needed to. So I think that ended up being a better choice. Uh, but I really like the look of the hard plumbing. Uh, versus coming over the top. I kept it super simple in the back. Basically street elbows. I wanted as little space between the back of the tank and the wall as I could. So I went with these street elbows. This is a this is a thread to a barb. So I'm going right into the hose with a barb. Uh, and it's a street so it's a nice hard angle there. And this guy, it was a thread to a thread, thread to thread. And the only way to get the street thread to thread is I had to go with this Banjo brand, which hopefully holds up with the Schedule 80. Uh, ball valve, just because that bulkhead is lower. And that was, that's pretty much it in the back. Uh, some magnetic mounts, Helios, 400 watt, package from BRS came with the magnetic mounts for the probe uh, there's the probe and the element and then the the unit the programming unit has room for two heating elements but since I don't have a sump and everything's in the tank I'm just going with one heating element uh, so that's FX4, I was a little worried the FX4 would be too big for the 37 gallon, but it's not. I probably could have gone with the five or the six, uh, but the four does, moves water around a little bit. I mean, decent, I do do, do have uh, big fans on the ends of those lock lines. So it's pushing water, but I did supplement with an MP40 uh, set on Lagoon mode, not that high nobody in here I'm just cycling but we'll see how low I have to turn that down on the tank uh, Dr. Tim's currently cycling with uh, the ammonia and the uh, and the Dr. Tim's so in a month or so we'll see I'll put the light on the top and see how this adventure goes but I will keep you up to date